Welcome back to Long Way Home everyone. Today we are going to have some fun in the garage. Today is also hopefully the last day where the weather is pretty bad outside. From tomorrow hopefully it's all sunny and warm. Perfect riding weather. So today we are going to attempt to change the 1200 from this to this. Yeah, I know it looks exactly the same, but that's not the point. What we are actually going to do is install some auxiliary brake lights. We are going to install two auxiliary lights, one running down here, one running down there. And when I press the brake pedal, we're going to make them flash. Get your motorbike news in a pleasant way. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next episode. Now, because I'm a cheapskate and I don't want to spend 40 euros on already made proper auxiliary brake lights, we're going to do something different. All right, we are going to use these very inexpensive RGB uh, LED lights, strip lights. These are about 10 euros for whole five meters of them. They are waterproof and I really don't expect them to last for more than about a year. I did get two completely different models, so let's quickly plug them in and see which one is the brightest one. Okay, so let's connect them together here. Let's turn the power supply on and hopefully we don't burn them. Now I know that white is positive and we need to put the negative on the red since we, yay, look at that. We touch different ones. This is the blue, this is the red, this is the green. I don't know what it looks like on camera. They seem to be identical. The intensity seems to be identical, but the ones on the ones that are further on seem to have more LEDs per square centimeter. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. Not bad for about one euro's worth of LED strip. All right, how are we gonna make them flash? For that, we're gonna use an accessory manager. Most of you have probably heard of the Hex Easy Can. That is an accessory manager that plugs straight into your bike's wiring, loom, CPU, CAN bus and basically controls any accessories that you put on it. Advantages of that are quite huge. Whatever accessory you're now plugging in, no longer do you need to put it on a separate relay, no longer do you need to run the wiring for that accessory to the battery separately. Plug all your accessories into that and basically control them with the software. And by controlling them, what I mean is setting up weird things, beautiful weird things, such as getting the additional brake lights to flash. Now the reason I want to put extra brake lights here is because this box basically stays on the bike with me the whole time. I never take this off, I don't see a reason to take it off. It's good for off-road, it's brilliant in town because you can keep all your stuff in here and lock it. So I don't actually mind running wires on top of it and, and making it a permanent fixture. So I want to make it a lot safer by basically extending the brake light one one strip on this side one strip on that side and when i brake i want it to flash get their attention all right now the installation of the easy can is pretty simple you need to oh come on yeah there we go and as you can see it's already inside here now i did buy this quite a long time ago i just haven't used it to its full potential so we're quickly gonna take it off this is the actual unit, this is the clever bit. One cable runs to the battery, which is this one, the positive and the negative, we'll show you that now. Now, unplug this, unplug this. So basically, this is the whole unit over here. You've got four outputs. These go to all your auxiliaries, whatever you wanna put in there, a separate horn, different auxiliary lights. We're gonna put brake lights in today. With these two connectors, you actually plug the Hex Easy Can into the bike using this RDS uh, sensor over here. RDS, I think, is your tire pressure monitor. I'm, I'm not sure on that, but, but all of the GSs should, should have that. You've also got this over here. This is your inertial sensor, let's call it. This is what uh, the lean sensing ABS uses to see at what angle you're leaning. This has got the same plug as that. Don't plug the Hex Easy Can into this ABS sensor. You need to plug it into, into this one. And to do it, it's very easy. You take this connector off the RDC sensor and in its place, you plug in the Hex Easy Cans one. Clips on very easily, just like that. Then you take the second connector that came with the, with the Easy Can. Then you plug in the original connector that comes from the wiring loom that originally went into that sensor. Make sure it goes on the right way. There's a little notch over here and that needs to line up with this connector's uh, release clip. Marry them together. 
there's no satisfying clip and that's it the only thing that's left is to actually power this on and we'll do that by routing this cable to the battery all right i've taken the seat off and the battery cover off so let's see how the easy can is actually connected to the battery we're gonna do some steady cam work here all right so the big power cable that comes from the easy can is routed through here underneath here all the way to the battery it does have an inline fuse so if anything goes wrong you're kind of kind of safe there the negative cable goes to the negative terminal and this orange positive one goes into your your positive screw over there and that's basically it the easy can is now part of the bike it communicates with the bike's computer it can do a lot of wonderful stuff and you basically never need to install another relay or or configure different wires to to draw power from the battery all right so step number one of our little operation is done what we need to do now is install the strip light the strip light <sighs> the led strips onto our top case run those wires somehow we need to figure out to the easy can and then configure the software so the lights actually flash when you are braking uh, i should have mentioned this in the beginning this is not a sponsored video for for the hex easy can i got this a year or two years ago i can't i can't remember i've just been too lazy to actually use it that's why i've still got all of these wires coming up and down and all this nonsense i haven't migrated any of the accessories that i have on here to the to the easy can yet but we'll do it slowly they will help me so what we need to do is run a two pin wire to one of these connectors here and run it from underneath there somewhere and hopefully it will come out the back somewhere here this whole thing moves so if you can take this off maybe we'll get some space to run it to run it from under here yeah there's definitely a screw here it's not a t25 Try, try a T30. Yeah, much better. There's another on the other side. There we go. Yeah, this is very flexible now. So we can actually run a cable from up here. We can run a cable from up there all the way to the back. Let's go find us a cable. Back to our desk of many wonders and we actually found a cable. It's gonna be a two pin cable, which is exactly what we need. We're gonna go measure the strip on the box see how much of this we need then we'll go and cut it solder two of these strips to to the cables join the cables and put them together in the hex easy can it's gonna be a lot of precise work and i don't know how to do precise work now i decided to cheat a little bit here and actually use the beginning and the end of this whole five meter led strip otherwise I would have to sit in and solder all these little little things which I'm really not in the mood to do. And a very short 20 minutes later, we now have two fully prepared LED strips with extensions that were a lot cheaper than... You see, I'm always going with the cheap stuff. One more important thing that we still need to do, we need to test them. Because there's no point in installing them and they're not working. Yes, one of them is working. See the other one. Yes, Houston, we have takeoff. So... All that's left now is to put them on the box, link them together to the other cable that we need to run through the back of the bike to the easy can. All right, what we need to do now is run this cable. It will come from one of these connectors over here. So this side will go into, into this connector and we need to run it all the way through the back here and hopefully pick it up by the brake light. Maybe it's easier to put it in from the other side. So let's do that. Okay, so let's feed it in from the top here. Right, it's easy, you can actually see the other side. Feed it in. Hey, and here it is. Here we go. So this one can stay longer here. And in the back, they will all three meet here somewhere. The LED strips will come from this side, one from that side, one from this side. And they'll meet together with this one here. So now it's time to actually clean the top case and stick the lights on. 
A bit of rubbing alcohol never hurt anyone. There we go. Now let's stick them on. This is 3M tape, so it should hold quite well. It's better than spending 40 bucks on proper ones. One on one side, one on the other side. More slack, Dave, more slack. That is very ugly, but it's just temporary. Let's see how it works. Let's see if it works. This is one of the connectors that comes with the with the easy can. So we're just gonna splice, splice this cable that comes from the LEDs at the back, just to test it. All of these connections afterwards need to be properly insulated because I see it's quite dirty here. So there is quite a bit of water getting in. If you ride through mud or rivers or all the nice places you should actually be riding your GS. All right, so everything's open, all the connections are open, you need to be careful. Let's connect it. Come on. Oh man, there we go. Moment of truth, keys in, let's try. Nothing. What? Oh, come on. Yes, I just had them wired up the other way. Good job to me and Dave. Okay, so let's start the one hour long process of actually cleaning everything up and waterproofing all the connection, making everything permanent and not, not like this, no. All right, the next step is to actually connect the easy cam, which has a USB port over here. Got a little waterproof cap. Take that off, don't lose it. Plug it into your laptop, little green light goes on. Next, we turn on the ignition. And as you can see, here are your new fuses. They're all electronic now, all controlled by a computer. So no more fuses, no more relays, nothing. All right, what we can see from the screen are the four different outputs that the EasyCan has. These are all color coded. The high power drain ones are the red ones and the orange ones. We don't need a high power drain for, for our little LED strips, so we put it on the yellow one. And the connectors that actually come out of the Easy Can are also color coded, and we've put it into the yellow one. And here are the different options we can pick for, for the brake light. So above 15 kilometers an hour, the moment we brake, the extra LED lights are gonna start flashing. Now, you've also got two little sliders here. The one is for when you're not braking, the other one is for when you are braking. And the intensity when you are braking is obviously at 100%. When you're not braking, it'll be at 10%. So this is the intensity at 10%. If we put it up to 100%, it's much, much brighter. This is what it's gonna look like when you will actually be braking. All right, so all that is left for us to do now is to properly put this away. The easy can does come with a little Velcro strip on the side here and you can put another one here on, on the bottom somewhere so that it doesn't move around. So let's clean it up and then let's go out and uh, test the lights. Actually, you're gonna get to see them before me because I can't see them while I'm riding. What? It's not flashing, Dave. Dave, you didn't press the right buttons, man. Dave, come back here. Dave, stop running, come back here now. Alright, hope you've enjoyed mucking about in the garage with me today. The Easy Can is compatible with a lot of BMW bikes that run on the same CAN bus uh, system. The latest version includes a new R1250 as well and obviously the Adventure. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you've learned something new, consider subscribing. We'll bring out more of these. Cheers and I'll see you on the next one.